Hello YouTubers, this is the Tree and 60 Fun and today's tutorial we'll be learning how to use tenses in scientific reports and thesis. So whenever uh, we write a scientific report, we need to follow a certain rules or guidelines, rules or guidelines in order to make uh, the perfect usage of tenses in our document. So we're going to see how to use which tense and at which moment in order to make our report of thesis as perfect as possible. So let us begin. So whenever we write an experimental report or draft a thesis paper, so you first need to choose which tense or tenses to use as I just said you uh, earlier. So from your chosen text, your reader receives two kinds of information. Basically, one concerns time. It is about when past, present or future. The other relates as to whether an event or process is open or closed. So let's go. And here are examples uh, which illustrate the distinction between open and closed events. So how long were you in Melbourne, Yoni? It's a simple past close even the other person has already graduated so how long were you in Melbourne so the next one you can see how long have you been at Melbourne Annie? so present perfect or open event so the person is still engaged on his or her course as we can see have you been at Melbourne so what do tenses do Verb tenses present a relationship between the present moment now and the other moment or the period in time which may be long or short. These moments or periods may be in past, present or future. Tenses basically manage time by placing them in a, within a particular relationship or time framework. So generalizing, we can say that in various types of scientific writing, some time frameworks are more commonly used than others. So the frequency varies from one section of a paper or report to another, and they can also vary between scientific discipline and another. So let's move towards using tenses in particular areas of the document. So the first one is using tenses in so this usually refers to your unpublished results and uses the past tense. So it's simple as that. So when we move to part two, which is tenses and introduction. So your introduction usually needs to include background information, which is generally accepted as a fact and discipline. So you need to explain why the research you are reporting is important. So it's usually pre presented in the present tense. So now we'll be moving towards tenses in methods. So in your method section, it is customary to write, uh, to use a form of the simple past tense to describe what you did in your study. So passive voice is also often used. So let's take the example, total phosphorus and total nitrogen were measured in the laboratory using standard procedures. Standard protocol was followed for the preparation of media from the stock solution. So now we move on to using tenses in results. So the past tense is used for results uh, obtained. In the results section, we use the past tense to detail uh, the results which we obtain. So we can see that uh, in the example, we can see overall more than 70% of the insects collected were of known phytophagus. So we are using the past tense in results. So now uh, we move on to using tenses in discussion. So the discussion uses present tense to explain significance of results. In your discussion section, you will explain the significance of the results. The present tense is normally used for this. So here's an example. Removal of vegetation for agricultural purposes appears to negatively affect the water quality of streams. So we are using the present tense for writing our discussion. So a combination of tenses to highlight past research and future directions in the final section of your thesis 
or report you summarize the main findings and major implications of the study point out any limitations and offer suggestions for future research so to do you, these things you may use a combination of tenses so i repeat that to do these things you may use a combination of these tenses so example is although the study found out evidence of tillage and irrigation within the study area from the data collected it wasn't it was not possible to determine if the effects of agriculture upstream cause or cause higher levels of total irrigation downstream further studies are therefore necessary to determine the effects of agriculture on the health of stringly park creek and for further resources, you can refer to Swell's JM and Freak Academic Writing for Graduate Students, Ann Arbor University of Michigan Press, page number 254 to 256. And thanks for watching, and please, please, please don't forget to subscribe and like. This is the best way you can help small creators like us. Thanks for watching. Thank you.